Hello families, I wanted to record a quick video to give you some of the expectations for kind of protocols and procedures when the school year begins. I know that many of you are also anxious about how a lot of the content and curriculum is going to work if you're new to Boulder Universal or if you're new to online learning in general. And that will um, be found right within your Schoology content when you log in and school starts on the first day. There will be a video there that will help you navigate Schoology, uh, how to find what to do for each day, how to find out how to submit things, and just the general um, kind of nuts and bolts of Schoology as you work through the FLVS curriculum. This is more going to be general BU policies and kind of how the classroom works. And so I know you got a welcome video from me already just kind of introducing myself and letting you know about some of these initial um, beginning of the year happenings, but now this will kind of be more nitty gritty. So on this page that I've emailed out, you'll find the Boulder Universal Handbook, which has all of our school's procedures, protocols, and policies. And so that's important to review. Beyond that, I'm going to go into kind of some more uh, course level specifics. So for pacing, it's important to understand each day that language arts is probably going to take about 90 minutes. Math, we have Dreambox, um, which is a new individualized program that uh, families can use and that along with the content will be about 60 minutes. Science is about 30 minutes and social studies is about 30 minutes and so if you break it up per day then you would end up with Friday kind of being a catch-up day where you're able to uh, finish up some loose ends. So a lot of our week at a glance covers four days and then uh, there's a fifth day to kind of create some some wiggle room. We know sometimes things come up. Uh, another way to uh, pace yourself is to spend each day doing the full course for the day. And so you might do all of the math content for the week. LA would be split between two days and then you would comp um, complete science and social studies on one day. Again, giving yourself that day to finish any assignments, submit things, email your teachers with any questions, that good stuff. So those are a couple different ideas for how to pace yourself, but do um, note specifically that language arts is pretty heavy and so that one is going to take a little bit more time as you maybe work through the content one day and then continue on and maybe complete the assignment the next day. Again within the Schoology class I'm going to break down a little bit of how uh, it works with practice pages, the interactive journals, and how to find what you submit, but just keeping those pacing things in mind is a good way to kind of start to think about how you're going to plan for your week. Um, parent involvement. I always say that at Boulder Universal you are not homeschooling with online content but you are homeschooling with online content and the reason why I put it that way is because especially at the beginning of the year especially at a second grade level there is going to be a high 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 level of parent involvement. Um, we're not a homeschooling program because you don't get to pick and choose what content to do. You're required to do the content and submitting is how we take attendance submitting the assignments and I'll touch on that more later and yet at the same time, uh, the, the level of intensity with parental involvement can feel a little like homeschooling at times, especially while kids are learning the program and learning um, how to navigate Schoology. So uh, plan on being pretty involved and plan on, you know, at least planning out the day with your child. Maybe you're able to give them a little bit of independent work, then you check in go back to some independent things that they can do on their own, but I don't want you to be surprised that it does take quite a bit of parental involvement. And it is important that you're also checking the grade book with your child. There'll be a video on how to do that within Schoology, but that's where they'll see feedback from me and together you guys can make changes or redo assignments or maybe perhaps there's something I suggest for you applying to, the, to your learning and to your assignment for the next time. And so all of that is an important part of the parent being involved is checking that grade book, making sure assignments are submitted before the deadline at 8 a.m. on Mondays, and then also just that day-to-day -day support. For quizzes and assessments, um, there's learning quizzes within the class, and those are an extension of learning. So parents are welcome to kind of support with those. You can read the questions and the answers to your child. You know, don't necessarily give them the answer, but you can talk through test responses, especially results once a child is finished and they can review their answers. Maybe if you saw them make a couple errors, talk through that once they're able to see, hey, this one and this one were incorrect, let's talk about why. But when we get to the final module assessments where the, the, where the larger unit 
and module is finalized. We are asking that students do that completely independently. We're not um, asking that you, for language arts, read the questions or the answers. You can read the questions and the answers for the other subject areas, uh, but just note that we're, again, asking that you don't guide at all, hint, make suggestions. If your kid makes a wrong answer, you don't say, well, wait a second, let's think about this, right? We want to know what they can do on their own, especially since those final module assessments are a lot of how we assume we can go away and do the report cards where we assess the standards. And so uh, we do want that to be completely independent. And that way we can, you know, say that we really know that they're meeting those standards on their own. And it's tempting for your parents, I think, sometimes to go, oh, well, they really know it. Let me just help them. But we really want that independent level. So the other thing that I want you to note is that district assessments like iReady will be complete, completed synchronously this year. We're going to do that during the virtual uh, office and, and lab enrichment time. So usually that like 9 to 1030 block will then become a synchronous time where we will all log in together and students will take that iReady test uh, on the Google Meet with me. And we're just doing that to kind of create fidelity around the data. So, um, you know, that's just going to be part of an extra expectation that you are logged on with us three times a year to take those assessments. So that is something to, to have on your radar. Due dates and deadlines. We do have due dates. And the reason for this, there's two different reasons. One is that if it could be, begins to compound where kids are just consistently getting behind, it gets really overwhelming to see where they're at. And kids also just start to feel kind of defeated in the content. So breaking it up by weeks really chunks that and makes it manageable. The other thing is that it's really hard on teachers to have random things coming in all the time. So for us to have a point where, boom, all of those assignments are in, I can grade that all the way from top to bottom, and I'm not going back to an assignment that a kid is submitting that we did two months ago, right? So that's really helpful for teachers. The last thing is attendance. This is how we show that you are quote unquote attending the class because we don't have synchronous times where students are required to be logged in apart from these district assessments. And so each week, the way that we say that you are attending these classes is by submitting work. And if you are not submitting work, we move into the um, kind of truancy procedures where we're saying, hey, this kid is chronically missing assignments across subject areas or in math alone, and so they're not really attending math. So that's why this is such an important part. I know sometimes deadlines seem really intense for elementary kids, but we really just zero out to show, hey, we need you in, we need you pacing yourself well each week, and we need you submitting to show that you're attending. So those are some reasons behind that thinking. For office hours, to begin the year, I'll be holding virtual office hours from 9 to 10 on Monday and Wednesday mornings. Then there will be some in-person opportunities that will happen. And so those will, you'll, you'll be hearing more about that and those will be um, presented to you as they arise. But for now, that office hour time will happen then and you can use the Google Meet code BU Hargadine. Remember that you need to be logged into your child's Google Drive for BVSD. Uh, if you use a personal account, it will not allow you to enter with a BVSD Meet code. So keep that in mind that you've got to go ahead and log them into to their BVSD Google Drive to be able to access that. For enrichment times, this will happen again on Mondays and Wednesdays from 10 to 10.30. There will be times down the road where we will be meeting in person for project-based learning, but beginning, this is how we're gonna start. 10 to 10.30, we'll have a half hour of different social emotional learning or uh, just kind of different things like even back to school bingo, lots of fun ways for kids to connect and build community. So during enrichment times, I do have some expectations about how that looks, just like a teacher would have for a learning time in a classroom. So it's important that a student approaches the virtual classroom just like you would a classroom in a brick and mortar setting. My expectations is that students come with the needed materials to participate in the activities. We're not really doing a fishbowl experience where a kid just sits and watches everybody else do it. If they wanna be at the activity, I think it's important for them to have what they need to participate. We try to keep materials incredibly simple so that there are things you can find around the house, but it does take a little bit of prep for parents to say, hey, I've got to print this off or I've got to remember to have markers 
ready for my kiddos so that they can actually participate. It's also important that kids keep cameras on. Um, I want to know, just like I would know that my kid had actually come to circle time, that they're there. Uh, so it's important that kids keep cameras on. And then it's important that they behave just like they would in a circle time setting at school. We're not rolling around, jumping off of things, doing something completely different, you know, like you playing with different dolls or different things in the background. So this would look and sound like remaining muted, but sitting in an appropriate spot in your home and following the steps and instructions that are presented for the activity. So I wanna treat this time really like we would a classroom, just to kind of give it that honor and respect that you would, where you would train children how to sit in a circle time while you're giving instruction. And so if students are not participating appropriately, I may choose to remove them from the meeting. This is not punitive, this is about then per, per, like presenting a, a point of connection where they can re-engage appropriately for our next meeting and maybe say, hey, these are the things that I need you to be doing in a meeting to be able to join us. Again, I'm not looking to embarrass kids. I'm not looking to like call them out. I am looking for um, setting those standards of norms and expectations the same way I would do that as a teacher uh, teaching in a second grade classroom in a building. So those are some things just to keep in mind. Uh, something to note about grading at the elementary level as we continue on with the kind of the um, procedures and protocols is that uh, Schoology will give you a percentage grade based on how I am scoring you or zeros, right? So that'll factor into to your grade. But uh, the grade in the grade book is not a reflection of necessarily how they would be graded out on their report card with standards. We are still a standards-based report card program in school, and while we have the grades in Schoology, really teachers are going to dive into various assignments that are going to show us mastery um, and proficiency of a standard. So just if you are seeing low scores, it's probably an indicator that there are some things that your kiddo needs to adjust in terms of doing the assignments, but it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to do poorly on their report card if they're showing mastery of the standards. We do uh, send report cards twice a year at Boulder Universal. So we have a fall semester grading and a spring semester grading, and we will grade out on the standards that were assessed and instructed on in that particular semester. And so you'll see maybe some blanks in the fall, but then in the spring, we will have assessed all of the standards and both um, semesters will have scores for those. So again, pay attention to the grades. More importantly, pay attention to the feedback in the grade book where the teacher is providing insight and input on how to in improve and increase scores if they are low. Um, that's something to consider with missing assignments uh, that you know, if we go back, we might say, hey, can you go ahead and finish this assignment? Or we might just ask kids to kind of keep plugging along. Um, but we can also ask for a child, you know, to maybe revise an assignment before a deadline, like, hey, you missed these components, please go back, review that and resubmit it. And that will increase the score right within that deadline. So that that's why it's important to check that grade book. When we talk about attendance and vacation and sick days, as we mentioned, you know, we're, we're taking attendance based on assignments submitted, so you don't actually have to be on on specific days and times. So if a kiddo is sick, chances are good that even a teacher in a classroom would say, hey, you know, welcome back to class. Can you take this home and finish it tonight? So we're getting them caught up in different ways, which might even include some work outside of, you know, the class time. And so the general rule is if there's a day or two where a kiddo is sick, we might you know, assume that you're gonna go ahead and get the things in, especially since we kind of create that catch-up day as a buffer. If it starts to get to be multiple days, we would do some, something similar to what a teacher would do in a classroom, where we would work with you to kind of do the most essential assignments and maybe excuse some other assignments with a doctor's note, that kind of thing. So, you know, if you're gonna take a vacation um, where it's gonna be longer, maybe we would connect with you and say, okay, please be sure to have these things done ahead of time. These are like essential. And then these things might be things that they would go ahead and get a zero on or be excused from based on the situation. So work with us, communicate with us, and then kind of know that we've got some padding worked into the weeks, so you know, each week so that there is an opportunity for kids, kids to stay caught up, even in the midst of kind of having sick days and things like that. So beyond that, when you get into the Schoology course, you are going to have another video that will give you an overview of how, how to navigate Schoology and the FLVS content. And so you're gonna wanna start in Language Arts when you log in 
in on um, the first day of school and you are going to want to click through the video and all of the getting started information that will be outlined in the video. Really, I know it's tempting to just jump right into the curriculum, but the more time you spend kind of in that getting started folder on Wednesday or the first day of school, the better because you really will be set up to interact with the content in a more meaningful way and a lot of your questions will be answered if you just pause and take the time to do that within that language arts course. It'll give an overview that will provide you with the support you need for all the rest of the content areas. So beyond that, I'm looking forward to working with you and I know that these, um, you know, sometimes these videos are long when we're kind of going over initial protocols, but um, hopefully it will help you give, you know, a sense of, of the bigger picture of what you're headed into. And I know that uh, setting up, you know, all of us for success is a way to have and ensure a wonderful year together. I am looking forward to connecting with you and please reach out if you have any questions.